Aperture, shutter speed, and ISO are the keys to making sure that your photos and videos not only come out exposed well, but also that they're extremely sharp. But to gain true mastery over your camera and unlock complete creative control, you're not only gonna have to know what those are and when to use them, you have to understand one game-changing thing when it comes to each of them. Let's kick it off with aperture, which simply put is just how wide or closed the hole in the lens is. The more open that it is, is called the lower f-stops, and the more closed that it is, is called the higher f-stops. Most prime lenses are gonna go as low as 1.2, 1.4, 1 1.8, and most of your zooms are gonna start around f2.8. One of the biggest benefits to using a low f-stop is that you're letting more light hit the sensor. Think about it, the hole in the lens is bigger, so more light is naturally getting in, and more light hitting the sensor can be really useful in low light situations. But the most common reason why people want to use a low aperture is to get as much blur behind the subject or in front of the subject as possible. And the wider the aperture, the more blur you can expect. And then for your higher aperture numbers, almost everything in the scene is going to be in focus. And that game changing thing with aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, and they each have their own unique thing here, is trade-offs. When you're adjusting these settings, there's always going to be trade-offs, and the more you understand that, the better you're going to be able to effectively use these settings together. The major trade-offs when it comes to aperture, there's two. The first one is when you're using a really low aperture and you're going for a lot of background or foreground blur, is that you're razor thin in your margin of error for nailing focus. Think about it. If you're wide open, you're trying to get a bunch of blur, the point you want to focus on, maybe it's the eye. You're not going to have much space between the eye and maybe the nose to make sure that you're in focus. So very often the back of your camera might look like you nailed the eye, but you might have actually got the nose and the eye might even be a little bit blurry. And then on the other side, the higher f-stops, if you want to make sure that you're going to nail focus and have everything in focus, the problem with that is that you might not be getting the look that you want to be getting when you first got your camera thinking you're going to have some, some blur in the background and creating some separation. That's very subjective and there are some scenarios where you'll want to use a higher f-stop. And those higher f-stops will not only make everything in focus, they're also going to make our image a lot darker. But once we become ninjas of shutter speed and ISO, I'm going to take you through a few practical scenarios and pull all these things together and make it all make sense. Stay with me. Shutter speed, which hands down has the most trade-offs. We'll, we'll get there. Make it simple. We're moving into shutter speed. And if you're getting something from this video, let me know by giving it a tap on the thumbs up. Shutter speed is simply how fast or slow the shutter is exposing the sensor. So how fast it closes and then opens again. And it has its uses for both photo and video. A slow shutter speed is going to let more light onto the sensor and make our images brighter, whereas a fast shutter speed is going to let less light onto the sensor and make our images a bit darker. If we're opening the shutter for a while, letting light in, more light, and then closing it at a slow pace versus just like that, obviously more light is gonna get in the slower or the longer that the sensor is exposed to the light. That fast shutter speed not only makes our images darker, it also can freeze motion. So fast moving subjects are gonna appear a lot sharper when we're using a faster shutter speed. Shutter speed are measured in seconds or fractions of a second. So for example, one over 100 is equivalent to one one hundredth of a second second or 0.01 seconds. That's how long the sensor is being exposed to light and how fast that shutter is moving. And that game changing factor when it comes to shutter speed, the trade-offs. Let's get the uniqueness of video out of the way when it comes to shutter speed. That being that if we want to maintain natural motion blur, we want our shutter speed to be as close to double our frame rate as possible. And this is going to help us avoid that jittery mess when our shutter speed is way too high as opposed to that nice and clean natural motion blur when our shutter speed is just right. Which means that for video, we can't use our shutter speed to help out with exposure like we can for photography because if we want to maintain that motion blur, it's going to be locked off at double our frame rate. Okay, back to those trade-offs. When we use a slow shutter speed, it's great because we can let a lot of light onto the sensor, which can be really helpful in low light situations. But because that sensor is exposed for so long, it's exposed to the scene, exposed to the light for so long, anything that's moving in the frame is going to have natural motion blur to it, which is great if that's the look that you're going for, but it's uh, it's not so good if you want a sharp image and everything's coming out blurry. This also means that even if you're taking a shot of something that it's static, there's no movement, but you're doing a handheld shot with a low shutter speed and you're not a human tripod like I am, it's the caffeine content in this one, 300 milligrams. Anyways. 
If you're not a human tripod like I am and you're doing a handheld shot with a slow shutter speed, even your own little micro movements are gonna make the outcome of that image a bit blurry. Good rule of thumb here is that you want your shutter speed to be double the length of your lens. So this is a 70 to 200. If I was shooting it at 70 millimeters, I'd want my shutter speed to be at least one over double the 70. So one over 140. Close thing you'll get in most cameras is one over 160, which is equivalent to doubling the length of the lens. If I was all the way out here at 200, then I want my shutter speed to be at least one over 400 to make sure that if it's handheld, if it's tripod, none of that matters. But if you're handheld, that rule of thumb is going to help your images stay really sharp and account for some of those micro jitters when you're handheld. And then on the other hand, a really fast shutter speed is going to freeze motion. Anything over like one over 500 will freeze most relatively fast moving subjects. And the only trade off to those fast shutter speeds is that it's going to darken the image or bring down our exposure. We can bring our exposure back up with our next point, which is ISO. ISO stands for International Standard I don't know, international standard of fake light. It's how we introduce fake light onto the sensor, which can be really helpful for getting our exposure. The lower the ISO, the darker the image, the higher the ISO, the brighter that image is gonna be, which can be a real lifesaver, but it does come with a cost. The trade-off here being very straightforward, as we increase our ISO, we run the risk of introducing the all-feared noise into our images or videos. Noise is particularly annoying because it can make your images come across a little bit more soft or it can produce some color shifting, it can be distracting, and it can just ultimately make your images not as clean as you might want them. I figured the best way to help this all sink in and pull this all together would be to quickly run you through three types of scenarios and show you exactly what decisions I'll be making, keeping all those trade-offs in mind. I'd like to get a shot here where I have everything in focus. So we have some really cool tones behind the car here and I think it would look cool to show everything in focus and and to do that, we need to bring our f-stop way up. So right now we're at f2.8. I probably want to be around like f16 to get everything in focus. We're clearly very underexposed here. I know that I can bring my shutter speed down a pretty good amount here. I'm at about 28 millimeters. So even though I'm locked off, let's maintain our rule of being our shutter speed at double the length of our lens. In this case, it happens to be one over 50. I'm close to exposure, but not quite there. The only thing I can do at this point is bring my ISO up a little bit until we have the exposure that we want. And then from there, we're just going to get focus. I'm gonna focus on the car here. It's not really gonna matter all that much because everything's gonna be in focus, the trees in the background, the car in the foreground, but the car being the subject, it makes sense to put the focal point right there. I wanna get a shot here where I'm getting a ton of separation off the subject and a lot of background blur. I've got the, uh, the brand new Sony A7C Mark II here, and let's get a really nice product shot of this. So I know I want a lot of background blur, so I'm automatically going to bring my f-stop as low as it can go for this lens that happens to be f2.8. Now after that I'm going to be able to play with my ISO and my shutter speed to get the exposure that I want. My ISO is as low as it can go already so I'm not going to be messing with that. And then my shutter speed, it looks like my, my exposure is going to be right about there for my exposure ends up being a shutter speed of 1 over 1000, which doesn't really matter. It's actually, even if I was handheld, it would only help out with making sure that I get a really sharp shot. If I want to get a shot here of one of these moving cars and I want to completely freeze motion, I'm going to have to prioritize my shutter speed to do that. I'm probably going to go at at least 1 over 500, maybe even a little bit higher to 1 over 640 because these cars are going pretty quick. After that, my f-stop is as low as I can get it. I don't need to bring it any higher for this shot because at f4 I'll have enough things in focus. If I want to be safe, I might bring that up a little bit, but I like f4 here. And then I'm just going to get my exposure using my ISO. And actually right here, it looks like I'm good there at 100. If I was maybe too bright at 100, I might bring my f-stop up a little bit to play with that exposure. But I like it at 100 there. Let's wait for a car to come by. And once it's there, we'll get our shot for a nice sharp photo, completely freezing our motion blur. Simple one here, we're doing like a low light vlog style shot. We've got like one street light that's like 50 feet away. And if we don't have the ability to add more light into a shot like this, like my shutter speed is at one over 48 because I'm shooting in 24 frames a second. So it's double the frame rate. So I can't bring that any lower to help out to bring more light in and my aperture is already as low as it's gonna go at 1.4. I'm a little bit underexposed on this shot right here, so all I can really do 
to get the exposure right is I have to bring the ISO up and I just have to deal with having, it looks like my exposure is right about there. I have to just deal with having a little bit of noise in the shot. And this is really a big benefit here of having a lens that has a wide aperture of like 1.4. Because if I happen to have a lens that say was like a 2.8 lens or even like an F4 lens, I'd have to, I'm way underexposed now, I have to bring my ISO even higher to get that exposure to be just right. And we're going to be getting up here into some numbers that are going to be very, very unideal to get that exposure to be similar to what it was. So with video, you gotta lock off your shutter and you're gonna, in low light, you're gonna get your aperture as low as you can possibly make it. And after that, you're just playing an ISO games to get your exposure. You just gotta deal with some of that noise that comes in. There is a fourth way to manipulate exposure. How could I forget? I did put together a part two to this video because now that you're a master of aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, that's just step one. You have to know what do you expose things to to use those things to get your proper exposure. So what values do you actually expose things to? And how do you set up your camera to easily understand what those values are? There's a free link down below if you wanna access part two to this video and get true mastery over your aperture, shutter speed, and ISO as well as exposure of your photos and videos. Anyways, there is a fourth way to manipulate exposure, but it involves one of these. And if you wanna know more about that and how variable ND filters work, you wanna check out this video where I dive into all of that. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Take care. See ya.